Hi, I'm Jeremy McLean, the Hedge Eye Retail Team. I'd like to talk about golf with you today. So golf is back, right? Tiger just had his best finish since the 2009 PGA, finishing second this year. And uh, everything's fine and dandy in golf today, right? It's all, all good and exciting. Well, not so fast, what I'd say. Uh, so some of you may know I'm a PGA uh, member, member of, the, member of the PGA of America, and I have 11 years of experience working in golf and I'd like to describe to you today why I think golf in the U.S. as it exists today is a secular short. So looking at why, let's uh, dive right in. Slide three, taking a long-term view. Uh, let's look at the participation history here on slide four. So three things I want to note here. First, we saw the peak in golf participation being the number of, number of players in the U.S. Uh, around 05, 06. So that's before the market crash. That's before... Uh, you know, Tiger scandal in 2009. Uh, so, you know, a different dynamic potentially driving the, the downside in golf participation. Now, second, we've seen a continued decline even in an economic recovery over the last, you know, 10 years. So, uh, it's not simply driven by the economy. And third, we see rounds per player are up. So that means it's the casual golfers that are leaving on the margin versus the core golfers as they play less rounds. So the issue is uh, not simply limited to casual golfers though. If we turn to the next slide here, we look at core golfers. And we note that core golfers are actually, if we break them down with the US population, they're aging on the margin. So there's a greater portion of the group that is above a certain age range uh, and is becoming overweight old. So we've got new golfers that are not coming in or not staying with the game and not becoming core golfers over time. So that's bad as your, uh, your aging golfers from the core stop playing because they simply get too old, they retire, they pass away, etc. cetera. Uh, so this is a unique dynamic because we've actually seen junior golf participation up 20% since 2011, yet they're not seeing the core golfer uh, demographic growing. So they're not staying with the game. And, uh, to get to why, let me turn to the next slide, I think there's three key reasons on why both the occasional golfers or casual golfers are leaving and junior golfers are not sticking with the game. So there's, those three elements are what I'd call perception of time, uh, awareness of alternatives, and the golf culture. So perception of time, I'm talking about how things have changed in terms of our behavior uh, driven by things like cell phones, social media, uh, there's even studies out there how dopamine release, which happens when you use your, your electronic devices, uh, can actually make you feel that time is going by at a different rate, it makes you feel time is going by faster. So there's some actual science behind what I'm, what I'm trying to explain here. Um, we turn to the next slide. Uh, this is the ramp in uh, mobile subscriptions in the U.S. Uh, basically, from the late 90s into the mid 2000s, is where you saw this massive increase in, in people who had cell phones. And my argument is that having a cell phone puts you in contact with people at all times that you might not otherwise have been previously. Uh, and that's what's driving people to say, you know what, I don't know if I really can allocate as much time to the game of golf as I used to. Playing around with golf takes, you know, four or five hours. Uh, People are now saying, hmm, I've got all these other things I could be doing with my time, and their belief of how that time goes by is changing as well. So if we look at uh, the next piece, which I think is culture, uh, this was a campaign to address slow play by the USGA, uh, I think it was about five or six years ago. They called it while we're young. So I don't think that's a reference to a line from Caddyshack by, by uh, Rodney Dangerfield. And I couldn't think of a worse way to try to get the sort of you know, casual golfer to play faster and be more comfortable about playing faster on the golf course. You're essentially doing an insulting inside joke uh, that's going to make them uncomfortable. It's not even really getting down to the real problem. If people aren't trying to play slow, so be telling them play faster is not the solution. You need to get to what is the real problem. So uh, if I look at the, the speed element, at least, um, we turn to slide nine. One of the biggest things you see in the golf courses these days is fescue. It's like the new look. All these courses are adding it to, to make it you know, more aesthetically pleasing. A lot of courses are taking out trees and adding fescue areas. Well, there's nothing worse for pace of play than fescue. It's, it's a long grass area where your ball goes in. It's hard to find. You take five minutes just looking for it. Maybe you find it. Maybe you don't. 
And uh, you know, the average golfer is not going to be enjoying the game when they have to search for their ball and they're losing many balls, especially if they're paying $5 for a Pro V1. Uh, it becomes more expensive, less fun, takes more time. So this new change in terms of the aesthetic of golf courses is actually making it more of a problem in terms of the pace of play. Uh, next piece, this was an initiative done by the USGA and the, uh, and the PGA, it's called Tee It Forward. It was actually a good idea, it's trying to get people to play a farther up tee, um, but it's, it's such a small step, it's really not changing, uh, changing the game beyond telling the person that they're playing it the wrong way. You, know, you gotta go play a closer tee, that's gonna help you play faster. And it has a little bit of a change on the margin, but uh, it's really not enough. And it's when we saw that ramp in cell phone use over you know a decade's time, this is when golf was really needed to be sort of innovating and, and getting ready for that next uh, dec decade of growth. And instead, they kind of reverted back and said, you know, we're going to the traditions of the game. You've got the USJ making rules that you can't use. You know, anchoring clubs. You can't use square grooves. You can't use drivers that hit the ball too far with the COR, high core, these illegal drivers, things that are making the game harder for the average golfer instead of easier. Uh, that's great when golf is growing and growing and growing, but now that it's in decline, you know, the, the PGA, the USGA, they need to start innovating if they want to get people back to the game. So that's the long-term view. Overall, I think very negative. I don't see there's going to be an inflection uh, in, in golf participation unless the, the, the industry leaders can get, find a way to really change the game uh, to make it more fun and easier for people to play. And just a quick example, think of like, is there any other sport where you play it almost exactly within the same rules and context as the professionals, right? I play a game of basketball, I'm playing pickup, we're playing ones and twos, you're calling your own fouls, you're playing half court, like that's not how you play the real game, right? But nobody cares, it's fun. We adapt to make it more fun for the average person. Why doesn't golf do that more, more aggressively? Uh, all right, so then taking a short term view. Now the stocks, main two public stocks, obviously Callaway and, uh, and Kushnet have done very well in 2018. Uh, and going all the way back to last year. Now, the reasons I'd argue, 2018 is certainly bullish. We have some very important catalysts here uh, that have been driving these stocks higher, driving sales in the industry higher. So first is tax reform. You can see you've got about a you know, three to 4% uh, increase on the higher end of incomes, and that's where your core golfers are. Core golfers make up about 85% of the spending in this industry. If you give them a tax cut, you're probably gonna get you know, a 10 to 20% increase in how much they're willing to spend in golf. Hence why you're seeing that type of increase in sales uh, for these major players. The other element is core golfers tend to be upper middle class and have assets, right? They have stocks, they have investments. All those have been appreciating. When you have the stock market up as much as you have uh, over the last two years, that's very bullish for golf spending as well. So looking at the company specifically, uh, Titleist, uh, I just kind of break down a little bit about the company. They, they have longer product cycles. They tend to do two-year cycles versus TaylorMade. It was as short as six months at one point. Uh, they're losing ball share right now to Callaway uh, on the margin. Callaway's been outgrowing them for the last two quarters. Uh, I think you've seen better innovations in terms of the look and even design of balls versus Titleist. They still have the same Pro V1 you know, naming of the ball. It looks generally the same. There's just not a lot of you know, newness and innovation there. Same on, their, on their, uh, their clubs as well. The one thing they do have going for them right now is they have a higher penetration of core golfers. So it's a, a little bit of more of a you know, higher quality golfer will play Titleist. Uh, that's going to get you a better flow through in terms of the, the core golf tailwind of uh, the tax cuts and you know, higher stock prices I just talked about. Callaway, you know, the, the one element we like there too is they have the ownership of Top Golf. Top Golf is the new, you know, sort of bowling alley of golf. Uh, it's a, a new way to experience the game. It's more popular with millennials. It's growing well, and they have a, a stake in that company. So you have some some downside protection there potentially. Uh, they're, again, I said gaining share on the margin to, versus Titleist and Balls, which has been Titleist, you know, cash cow for years. And uh, they have some hot product lines right now. They've been gaining momentum in terms of marketing and new, new pros they signed up ever since Nike uh, left the equipment business. Um, so the risk for them would just be the higher penetration in, in those casual golfers. 
if you see declines in participation overall, it's going to accrue more likely to uh, more to Callaway uh, likely than than Titleist. So uh, just overall, we don't like golf manufacturing. It's not a good business. Uh, you've got low margins, high capital requirements, uh, high marketing R and D costs, and again those short product cycles. Um, yeah, over the near term, you know, we're, we'd say it's still tailwinds in 2018. Uh, we would like uh, Callaway, ticker ELY, more than, than uh, Kushnet, ticker GOLF, golf. Um, but ultimately, we're probably looking at these. Uh, we're not likely, or we're not looking to be long outright either of them, but we're looking uh, more so on when we see an inflection to get, to get short on these names. So if you have any questions, please email us uh, at retailteam at That's it for today. We'll see you again next time.